here there's certain words we're not supposed to say for the yes we, we 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 cannot say the name of the reason why the entire world is collectively nice. its pants um what we have to they'll take away your money yes yes because right now and this was an announcement that youtube actually put out they said um be aware that some of your videos might be taken down incorrectly because we're going to be using less people during this crisis and more uh algorithm ai to take down Which, videos like, less people is good and responsible and would be great if their algorithm didn't well this is going on youtube so let's just say it's not as good as people they, they could just they could just turn the algorithm down. That's true. What they've done is they literally, they've ramped the algorithm up to just catch stuff just in case someone violates a, right, a copyright somewhere. But in addition to that, they also, um, did you know that they, they do an automatic uh, transcription? And that's how they find out if we do curse words. And that's, that's why I don't use the E, the bleep noise. Because it looks for that. Oh. That's why I actually use words over the words. Because, screw you. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, we, if you say the, the name of the thing. If you say the Voldemort. Yeah. The, the reason why is because, um, they are being overly cautious for once, oddly about misinformation going out about this or people doing monetizing it, whatever. Um, so we, we uh, the, the, I got this term from tech YouTube, bless them. Um, we're calling this human malware, which, uh, that, that works. I think we, we're that, does, that sounds about right. Yeah. We're w welcome to yeah, the, the human malware. And that way they can't demonetize me, even though we all know what we're talking about. Yeah. Because we had these polite, stupid fictions. God, I hate doing this sometimes. So yeah, we haven't really... We went out for like a walk on Tuesday. Just because I haven't been out of the house in like a week. And I'm starting to go a little crazy. Um, and it was it's weird out there, man. Like everybody's friendly, but there's this like underlying constant anxiety it's food charleston and shame on this entire day down even though the tourism has been shut down even though they're telling people not to go to restaurants and stuff charleston apparently is still in that bubble of stupid where they're like it's not the big deal it's just the flu um i literally had no choice but to go out today because we needed a padlock a uh, storage building the padlock got yeah. cut off of it we had to have some way to close that back up. So I had to go to the Wally world to get a padlock. And, uh, and also I needed the other things I needed. I needed uh, headache medicine. I needed uh, reading glasses because I lose them ridiculously. Don't, don't even ask. Um, but I got a padlock. And here's the thing. You're all, we're supposed to keep distance from each other whenever possible. Yeah. If you, in, in case you didn't know this, if you're out in public, I don't know if y'all have heard, but there's a thing going on out there. Stay about six feet away from each other. If you can, you don't need to be in. So that's the thing we're supposed to be doing. Yeah, that's not happening here. People are just sort of lollygagging, walking around super slow. I hate, which I hate. You're going down an aisle yeah. and there's a part, someone in front of you going like super slow, completely oblivious and to other humans around they them. Are, the more space they take up. Yep. And I'm not talking about their size as a person. I'm talking there are people that have just learned how to take up more space. They walk with their arms out, carrying. They have a basket next to them instead of in front of them, whatever. But like the slower they are, the more space they have figured out how to take up. So you can't get around to them. And all right, we're going to have to do a not all parents here, but um, parents. Things have changed. Okay. Yeah. You have got to keep your children to yourself. Because, like, you they have to. Everything. 
Yeah. They just lick things. They lick things. And they run around. I can't around. tell you how many times in my retail years my par- I had parents hand me a piece of merchandise that their child had been chewing and drooling on. They let them teeth on it. And they were like, oh, I don't want this. Yeah, the, the days when you could just uh, be completely oblivious to what your child is doing in the yeah, middle no. of public, you can't do that anymore. That's you, over. Yeah, and if you... <laughs> I'm telling you right now, consider this a warning. If your child comes up to me during this entire this time of crisis, um, I'm not going to hurt a child. That's horrible. But what I will do is scream at them. <laughs> at the top of my lungs, I will begin to scream the lyrics to the Transformers theme song at your child. Okay, why that one? Because it's... um. Not offensive. There's no words, horrible words in there for them to learn. They and it's disconcerting. Okay, I would go a baby shark just to punish that parent. No, the kid would probably sing along to that. Right, but. exactly. <laughs> for hours, for hours, but, that kid yeah. would be singing that. Shit. Now you've got to the, the the game has changed. Everybody, please just look after your kids, please, for their sake too, because. God only knows what they're going to get yeah. from some stranger and bring back to you. So you're screwed. You know who I have seen is really enjoying our period of dystopia is the dogs. Oh, God, I yes. I don't know about Loki, but like Denver is a very dog friendly city. Everybody here has a dog. We're the weird people who have cats. So like <laughs> everybody in my development has dogs, and those dogs are getting like four walks a day. <laughs> <laughs> They're so happy. When we went out to walk around, we saw like 20 just happy, ebullient dogs. Like, this is the best week ever. Uh, the dogs are psyched. Our cats are sick. Like, even Simba's so nice. sick of me. I've like, seen They're that just a lot. like, God, are you guys going to like go somewhere? You're not. Could you? You're actually not the first person to notice that. Um, other people are noticing that people that their cats are getting sick of them. But uh, and like they usually don't like it when we go out. They get very upset. But I think they're starting to appreciate it because now they're just like, God, you're still here. Oh my God! Why? Go do things. Can I? Yeah. My... Like usually, all three of them follow me everywhere I go. I went downstairs for like two hours. They did. None of the cats came. They were like, God. She's gone. Oh, right. yeah, it's going to be a while. So, of course, we know what this week is going to be full, filled with. Ugh. Sadly enough. Yeah. Um, let's 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 get it underway. Let's. Uh, uh, all right. Here we go. Uh, and hmm. we go. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With And um, we're going to start off this week with, um, I'm not, sh- this, this, this has actually happened a few weeks ago. Um, that's what, this story is dated February 3rd. Uh, I, I am not a superstitious man. In fact, I don't believe in anything that, you know, all that super, none of that stuff. However, this is fucking with me. This is straight up fucking with me. Um, dozens oh, yes. of cursed tablets found <clears throat> down a 25-year-old well in Athens. Put them back. <laughs> <laughs> Thwarted by a new law from placing their hexes, uh, thwarted by a new law from placing their hexes in the tombs of the untimely dead, Athenians sought a new avenue to the underworld gods. Thirty lead tablets engraved with curses have been found at the bottom of a twenty-five hundred-year-old well in ancient Athens. <coughs> now, aside from the curse stuff, okay, can we just appreciate that this is probably the most ancient "what the fuck is wrong with you" we've ever had? <laughs> Because here are these people throwing lead into the water supply. Explains a whole fucking lot. Just to get around a law that said they couldn't hex people's tombs. So, 
Uh, Just these, to say a final fuck you. These curses were ritual texts usually scratched on small lead objects. The person that ordered a curse is never mentioned by name. Only the recipient observes uh, Dr. Juta Strozek, director of the uh, uh, Keremikos excavation on behalf of the German Ar Archaeological Institute in Athens. Before the discovery of the 30 specimens in the well, dozens of curses from the classical period have been found mainly in tombs of dead people. Um, okay. This is why no one likes archaeologists. All right. Yeah. I thought nobody liked ethical philosophy professors. No, this is why this is why no one likes archaeologists, because what do they do? They're barging into tombs that are cursed. Just don't do that. They're 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 ransacking uh relics of the Lord. Don't do that either. Indiana, let it go. You know what what the fuck the fucking nobody likes it. Put them back. <laughs> Just throw them Jesus back. Jesus Christ, put them back. Do you what did what have you done? Put them the fuck back. You fucking idiots. Oh, look, these cursed objects. I'm going to juggle these and I'm going to rub them on my balls. No, put them the fuck back. You fucking assholes. I maintain, though, that all this shit started when we turned on the Large Hadron Collider. That's true. You know what? You're not entirely. It, it Two did fucking happen. Weeks. Two fucking weeks after we turned that motherfucker on, financial crash. And it's, and it's just been a slow snowball downhill since then. Yep. Nature, the birds tried to stop that motherfucker. They threw bird, they threw bread in a fan that shut the whole thing down. Like the universe tried to tell us. We didn't listen because we're uh, cocky motherfuckers. So, now we broke the universe. So in the in this time of horror, um, would you like a feel good story, or or I, perhaps I should say a Schadenfreude feel good story? Sure. Um, Any kind of feel good we can get. One of the, it turns out the drunk elephants in China were a hoax. Yeah, I know, right? And I actually, I appreciate you folks sending me that story, but I actually have to follow up on that stuff, and that wasn't so. Yeah, badly. which is a bummer. Um, but uh, yeah, um, we've had a problem lately with hoarding, um, and gouging, where people uh, with a lot of different things, um, surgical masks. I heard about this on This American Life. One of the people uh, on there, the only way to get a surgical mask to take care of their mom, where they were talking with a CVS employee who had stockpiled them and were selling the mask at 10 bucks a pop. Jesus. They're $1 masks, selling them at 10 bucks a pop. Um, people have been hoarding stuff like hand sanitizer, all, all of these things, and gouging at the prices. Now, I want to point out the hand sanitizer, the Lysol, especially the rubbing alcohol. Hmm is vital for people who require intravenous medication. Yep. And some diabetics. Like, you need that shit. So yeah, we've had this hoarding going on. Well, one person, and this, this, this warms the cockles. Uh, you may have heard about this dude. Oh, yes. Makes me so happy. Yeah. U.S. man who stockpiled hand sanitizer probed for price gouging. What this dude did, and I want to show you, oh God, the new, fuck you, New York Times. What kills me is he thought letting the New York Times publish his name and picture was going to work out for him. He here, thought he had a sympathetic tale to tell. Yeah, here we, here we go. Look, look at the, and the, the, the credulous New York fucking Times that published this story. Here it is. Um. He has 17,700 bottles of hand sanitizer and nowhere to sell them. Oh, no. Oh, no. Look, look at sad man. I don't, I can't sell my stuff because Amazon let won't let me. print his name and picture. He thought he was the sympathetic figure. Look at the t-shirt. The his t-shirt reads family man, family business. Yeah, you know what else is a family business? The mob. <laughs> so this dude d did a profile in the New York Times, which they they did the 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 world's smallest violin. They went, they gave him the full Nazi treatment, which was like, I don't you know, even know how he thought this was a good idea. Which by the full Nazi treatment, I mean they powdered his ass and wiped his tears, which is what they do with Nazis. But um, 
Matt Colvin from Chattanooga in Tennessee told New York Times he had faced, quote, a huge amount of whiplash. Online platforms had cracked down on sellers listing the related, oh, I have to bleep that, uh, items at inflated prices. Um, Mr. Colvin later said he would donate his goods, but on the same day, the Tennessee Attorney General opened an investigation. Now, this is the best part. People who had seen the story looked at photos of his storage building and cross-referenced it with his location in Tennessee and Google maps the location of his exact storage unit. And then I forget who it was. It was some local authority, but they facilitated the donation. Which means they went into the storage room, they broke that bastard open, and they took his freaking hand sanitizer. And they took that shit. But they called it facilitating his donation, which I appreciated. Now, before you guys start going along with the uh, New York Times and, and weeping tears for this man, understand he was selling bottles of hand sanitizer on Amazon for $70 a piece. Fuck this guy. Fuck him. With a rusty screwdriver. Um. So, yeah. Uh, it, price gouging, the act of reselling an item in high demand with a grossly excessive price markup, is prohibited in the state of Tennessee if the governor has declared a state of emergency. If found guilty, the person can be fined up to $1,000, which doesn't sound a whole lot, but also the entire world knows your name and face and they know you're a scumbag. And apparently, once his name got published, people in the local area say, like, he's known for, his family is known for this down there. Like, this is not the first time they've pulled shit like this. You know, what? Trash. Just... If you have the what always blows my mind, if you have the wherewithal and the resources to invest in doing right. shit like this, you could do legitimate crap and make money. Like you had the money to buy 17,000 bottles of hand sanitizer. Do you know what else you could have done with that money? You could have fucking helped some people. But, all right, let's put aside this entire emergency altogether. If you have access to that sort of resources, you could have a legitimate, profitable business going on without having to price gouge anybody. Yeah. But no, you actively chose to do this shit. You chose to be a garbage person. This was not a requirement. This was not like, I have to feed my family. You were feeding them, motherfucker. You are not Jean Valjean. No. <laughs> Christ almighty. The tiger does not come at night. Um, <laughs> it's like three. I'm still just blown away that he thought talking to the New York Times was a good idea. Like that, the lack of fucking self awareness there. Right. The the complete uh, this, fucking dick shittery. This will make to people think that that call. Was a good idea. This will make people call Amazon and get it reversed. Yeah, because everyone's the, gonna feel real bad for me. But Honey. that is Honey. not. That is not the only uh, human malware issue going on. Um, once again, I I've, mean, there's also every beach in Florida right open. now. Yeah, and full of idiots. I forget which news story. Which, rubbing on each other. Spring break. Um, I forget which uh, news story this outlet this morning showed a juxtaposition. Paris, France, one of the biggest tourist destinations in the world, is shut the fuck down there ain't nobody yeah and clearwater florida idiots just wall-to-wall -wall idiots if just you, morons as far as the eye can see and the problem is you know what if they were just doing this to themselves i would be less upset but they are a danger to others now because so one, one of the reporters on cnn was interviewing these kids and one of them mentioned that she lives with her grandma and he's like, do you realize that like senior citizens are much more prone to dying from the human malware and you could kill your grandma and the look on her face, she was just like, uh, <laughs> like blue screened right in front of us. Fucking anyway. Um, from our continuing series, nine one one is not customer service. Oregon, Oregon police remind residents 
Don't call 911 if you run out of toilet paper. Come on. Fuck, if I only know I, I could just do that. Come on. Coronavirus. What are you going to do? What are your ass for you? <laughs> do you not think they have other shit they're worrying about right now besides your personal shit? <laughs> Literal shit, in fact. The coronavirus has not been kind to supplies of toilet paper, while well, the uh, obvious items such as hand sanitizer and disinfectants, the rolls of tissue have been increasingly hard to find. Uh, but please, for goodness sake, don't panic if you run out. That, at least, is the earnest request of the police department in Newport, Oregon. It's hard to believe we even have to post this. Do not call 911 just because you ran out of toilet paper. You will survive without our assistance. Listen. You're not going to like, some of you are going to be very grossed out by what I'm about to tell you, okay? You're not going to like this. But, times are hard. You can use a washcloth. You can wash the washcloth if it's an emergency. It's terrible. At the end you, of the day, it's about the same as a cloth diaper? Yeah, it's. you should be using... Toilet paper, but if there's yeah. no toilet paper, and you know what? This is the thing. I I, I was talking I, about this I one. Like how you just said that in the entire chat. I next. know everybody. Like, oh, that's where I draw the line. The you net split. Out. Yes. <laughs> nope. Nope. Um, I, I was in with the balloon fetishes <laughs> and the naked people and the dude who shit all over in elementary school. But this is where I draw the line. Maxine in the channel also has a great idea. Just hop in the fucking shower. Apparently, you can buy a bidet attachment on Amazon for like 20 bucks. And that is a thing that to this day is baffling me. We are supposedly best nation in the world. America, number one. Not a bidet in sight. Yeah. Well, of course, they are here, but they're not exactly standard issue. What is it about us that we're like, we're too good for ass washers? <laughs> I mean, that might make you gay. There's a whole subsection of the internet of dudes who don't wipe their own ass because they think touching your own ass makes you gay. And I wish I was making that up, and I'm not. That's a thing in our fucking society. <sighs> well, that's not to say the... Uh, we the could also just learn how to use the three seashells. People have been making that joke, and I... I I, 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 they've been making that joke like everybody gets it, but keep in mind, there's a whole, that is a very old movie at this point. I know. There's a whole bunch of kids who were born after but Demolition Man. Because then we can all be like, he doesn't know how to use the three seashells. <laughs> we can be like the people in the movie now. Yeah, they're just going to be like, okay, boomer. Um, but whatever. For real. Um, never let it be said that the, uh, the, the normal shit is not still going on. Um, although another, another, before we get to the next story, we want to pause and say this. Everybody been checking your email the past week or so. Are you sick to death of everyone you have ever, every store, every, every list, every, everything you even looked at for a second, sending you an update on how they're dealing with the goddamn human malware? See, I'm, I'm just really glad my mortgage company told me what they were doing. <laughs> the I mean, mortgage it's company! <laughs> every company you've forgotten you gave your email address to is reminding you now to unsubscribe. <laughs> I think that's handy. It was it was like this when we had the, the privacy thing in Europe took off. and you hear, Now they're doing it again. Look, Best Buy, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I, I literally do not care how you're handling this. Yeah. At all. GameStop just closed. Just fucking yeah. All right, but there there is of course normal stupid because you know we are a species. Um, we the de the devil's in the details as they say. When we get the details of the story, it's going to be one of those. Uh, Louisiana couple accused of stealing one thousand dollars worth of beer, which you know, given our show, that doesn't sound like a whole lot. And but they wait. might be Jean Valjean. I mean, we're in a time of crisis. You can't be expected to go through this without beer. Well, um, Baton Rouge, Louisiana couples accused of swiping more than $1,000 worth of beer from the shelves of Target stores 
were arrested on theft charges Sunday. Now, you're thinking a thousand, that's no big deal. But East Baton Rouge Sheriff's deputies have been investigating the beer burglaries last week. The couple made six runs to two Baton Rouge target locations between February 24th and 29th. Ashley Forbes, 32, and her husband, Matthew Forbes, were captured on security cameras filling shopping baskets with cases of beer before slipping out of the doors without paying. Two stores, six times. Um, was, was it all old Milwaukee? Well, I, I just... Because that doesn't seem like the math doesn't work there for me. Hmm. If they made that many runs, it should be more than a thousand dollars. It seems like, unless they were drinking absolute but, urine. Yeah, just but no. It, it this is I I this this is messing with six times of the same two places over five days. What did you think? Oh, well, they didn't catch us. We're home free. No, you don't even understand how much this is a thing. <sighs> Every retail job I've ever had, we had pictures of people in the back that were serial shoplifters at our store to look for <laughs> because they came in repeatedly and did the same shit and they learn the schedules so they know when the same people are there and they like, this is a thing. They just hit the same spot over and over and over and they learn when the regulars are working and when they're not and like, it's... That's, that's not uncommon at all. Yeah, the, the thing is, just because the employees don't stop you doesn't mean they aren't aware of you. Yeah. And they haven't informed. It means they're not allowed to stop you because then you might get offended and we might lose a sale. Yes, that's what they or, call the police for. Yeah. We might lose the opportunity to have you steal from us again. <laughs> we appreciate your patronage. Um... But six times, the, uh. although of course they, the 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 mug shots are incredible, delightful. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. He has two two five tattooed on his neck, and I love how he's like, yeah, Butch, so good. Two two five, y'all, and it looks like it was done with like a ballpoint pen. <laughs> on the other hand, she's just like, well. Here I am. Uh, well, next up, another robbery that um, I I don't I don't get it. I got a couple more robberies tonight. Police in Oregon to say a man robbed a donut shop with a hatchet. He was found eating a donut. Police in Oregon arrested a man on Saturday after he allegedly robbed a donut shop with a hatchet, left with a box of donuts, and stopped a short distance away to eat one of the treats. Officers responded to the call about the robbery 3.24 a.m. Saturday. Portland Police Bureau said in a press release, the Bureau didn't say what the donut shop was robbed, but the Oregonian reported it was a voodoo donut. That's a, what is a voodoo donut? Oh, it's like a big chain out there. Yeah. I think they're all vegan. But they do crazy ass flavors. Well, it's like total hipster donuts. Hipster donuts. While officers yeah. were responding to what originally called a disturbance with an axe, the suspect, identified as Christopher L. James, left the donut shop on foot. Officers found James about a block away, eating a donut and holding a pink box from the donut shop. James ran and was captured two blocks from where police found him. Voodoo Donut spokesman said the company is cooperating with authorities, providing surveillance footage. Look. Was this worth it? <laughs> for donuts. You're you going to grab a hatchet? You're and waving some people. You're waving donuts. You're waving a fucking axe at people, which I'm pretty sure you shoplifted that axe. Let's be honest. You're waving an axe at people and you steal donuts. But then your lazy butt can't run further than a block. Yeah. Those must be some good fucking donuts. Tara, I ask you, where is the work ethic? Right? At least take, make them empty the register. 
Right, just for just for a box of donuts. Just for the fucking dignity of it. You did this for a box of donuts. And I, I gotta put you, put point this out. Even if you don't actually hurt someone with a weapon, it's still assault. Yeah. And someone in the your lawyers can clarify it. To my understanding, the, the the brandishing of the weapon is the assault. The battery is when they hit you with it. But I hope those donuts were fucking worth it because you're not going to have any for a very long time. Arkle says, dude, do not wave an axe at people. I also like to point out, as I always do, that the people working at the fucking Voodoo Donuts at three in the morning do not need your shit. They do not need this shit. They don't need to be threatened with a hatchet. No. Because you have the munchies. No. I just and I love when the cops got there. He's oh shit, I should have kept running. So he yeah. did have the wherewithal to run. Just lazy bastard. Kids yeah. these days. Goddamn kids these days. And finally this week, one more robbery. Um well, not subtle. Not not fuck Ocean's Eleven, this is not. Men jailed after sledgehammer break-in at Curry's PC World in Ashford. Look at that! Whoa! Two members of a gang who smashed through the wall of a computer shop in Ashford using sledgehammers have been jailed. They apparently also slit someone's throat in front of that door. What the fuck? Uh, no. Hmm? Uh, it's probably paint. I just... Yes. It looks like arterial spray. <laughs> um, the group smashed through the wall of the Gallagher Way store with sledgehammers, sounding the burglar alarm and leaving bricks and insulation scattered at the scene. Uh, police responded to the law, attended after the alarms were activated and interrupted the break in before recovering up to 40 laptops that the gang were attempting to steal. Um, officers later stopped two cars that had been seen leaving the area, arrested. Uh, let's see, uh, Ian Mahai and, uh, Vervelis Stansi. Look at these guys. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, one of them's got, like, the Zachary Quinto hair going on there. Kind of, yeah. Uh, the other one's just got the sad hair going on. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Very frosted, though. It's got the frosted. Um. Brassy. <laughs> Investigating officer, uh, Detective Constable Andrew Palmer said the quick actions officers prevented the loss of a large amount of expensive equipment. Um, also, the fact they were carrying sledgehammers might have slowed them down. Look, you cannot, in broad daylight, smash a fucking hole in a fucking wall stealthily. I'm not even sure you can do that at night. It's Europe. There's cameras everywhere. Yeah, they they don't they they're they have no concern about just that the just good God Almighty. Did this place not have a window you could just throw a rock through? I mean, th there's a door. There's a door right there. There's a fuck. Did they think? Well, if we go through the door, we'll set off the alarm. If we go through the wall, nobody will know. <laughs> Who's gonna notice? Uh, they had sledgehammers. They could have gone through that door in seconds. But no, they took the time to to wily coyote their fucking way. Jesus Christ. Like, they, they have the work ethic. They're just fucking idiots. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're they're willing to do that. They're willing to, to to get the sweat of their brow. Just beneath the brow, there's not a whole lot going on. <laughs> Nothing going on under there now. Yes. Maybe that's what the laptops were for. They were gonna like homeschool themselves. Yeah, people are saying the thing he was probably the alarm is on the door, not the wall near the door. Do you know what the most disappointing <sighs> thing about it is? What? Neither of them did this dressed up like Kool Aid Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
fucking respect. <laughs> hey, Kool Aid. Oh Jesus. Well, oh, you know why? You know why they didn't? They don't have Kool Aid in England. Oh, that's right. They don't like to drink sixteen cups of sugar in a glass. No, they don't. They don't. Yeah, they don't have Kool Aid in England. Um, just God damn it. I, I I'm just I, I'm pretty sure the cop showed up. It was just like, really, really? <laughs> <laughs> baffled. Really, you fucking assholes. So that 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 this is the first thing we learned to like tonight. Sometimes in life, just learn not to overcomplicate things. Yeah, you, you'll Don't go overthink it. But also, we've also learned this week, while maybe not overthink it, also be prepared to do the work. Yeah. Don't overthink it. Don't underthink it. Go the distance. You gotta hit you that know? sweet spot. Um, we've learned that uh, shoplifters are not very original. Um, no. they, they, they don't They don't change it up. They get stuck in a rut really damn quick. Um... We have learned that yet again, nine one one is not a remote control, and also we've learned some terrifying, disgusting, and desperate alternatives to toilet paper. Nine one one is not going to wipe your ass for you. No, that's 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 terror. That's probably a fetish. They got more important things to do. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean diaper diaper things are that's totally a fetish. Yeah, but yeah. that and nine one one. So that's probably someone's specific <laughs> fantasy. Probably, We're, but don't call them. Someone is watching this right now. Has got like this. Better not awaken something in me. Um, <laughs> we've learned that um, if you're going to be a fucking scumbag, it's not going to help you to go to the New York Times. I mean, I can see how you would think that because right. of the president. Yeah. But he was like a reality TV star. And for some reason, that means he can do anything he wants. Apparently. That's the difference. You, you're fine. You're, you're just fine. Yeah. You're nobody. You don't, you don't even have a fake million dollars. And finally, we've learned this week. Archaeologists are terrible people. Put it back! 